Welcome to Focus Washington. I'm Chuck and Coney, and we're going to do something a little different today. My colleague Stan Collender is here, and he's going to interview me about a, a newspaper columnist who I've always admired. All right. Her name is Liz Smith. That's right. She, until yesterday, was writing for the New York Post. That's right. Uh, she was a gossip columnist in the purest, most wonderful sense of the term. You were a gossip columnist here in Washington. <laughs> Please excuse the expression, but... For anybody who didn't know what Liz Smith does, would you just tell us a little bit about what that is? She was one of the great legends, Liz Smith. And one of the, and the term gossip has always bothered me a little bit because it has a connotation. It's sort of, well, it's not actually true. Both Liz and I worked under the premise that we were reporters, but we were kind of reporters about social and celebrities mm -hmm. and stars. And so what we did was accurate. It wasn't just gossip, but in a way, everyone says all news basically is gossip. And so what she would do and what I would do, but I took my leadership from her because I found her kind of the gold standard. And I would go out every night as the way she did. I mean, she covered New York like a vacuum cleaner on the whole so on the theater circuit, the social set. Mm -hmm. And I tried to do the same thing here in Washington, sometimes about as many, three, mm -hmm. three parties a week, a night. Right. So uh, is this a, I mean, we're talking about a gossip columnist for the New York Post. The New York Post, a Rupert Murdoch paper, That's right. is known as a gossipy paper. That's what they report. That's right. So what's going on here? Why would the Post get rid of, you know, someone with, I mean, this is like getting rid of a Jimmy Breslin or something. That's right. This, this is an extraordinary event in the, in, in the history of journalism. Uh, journalism is, print journalism seems to be falling apart. And boy, I think she was such an asset for that newspaper. She always would be. Even at 86 years old, she's a remarkable woman and with this great uh, sort of whiskey, cigarette voice. And how the Murdoch people can give her up only says to me that that paper is in great financial problems. Right. And it's, it's not picking up and they're, you know, they're jettisoning, even though she wasn't that highly paid person mm -hmm. by comparison. All right. Does, is there another place that, that she might show up? I mean, if, I mean, does the internet provide her with an opportunity? I mean, electronic journalism. I think electronic journalism and the internet is going to provide her another opportunity. I'd seen a story this morning that basically said there is a there's a group of prominent journalistic women who are going to be appearing on it, kind of their own base. And I really wish them well because it's I, it, the world isn't going to be as interesting a place without Liz Smith's column. I, it, it's probably a, a PR person's nightmare. That is, is one less place oh. to plant a story about your your your, your that's clients. Right. Um, I've got to think New York is just going to be different now. Maybe it already is, and that's one of the reflections. But when you've got a situation like you have on television now, where TMZ on Fox, which is nothing but celebrity sure. gossip, when you've got uh, American Idol and Americans almost in a voyeuristic way wanting to see people crash and burn, um, you wonder why Liz Smith. There's not a place for Liz Smith in journalism somewhere. There has to be. There, there's a place for Liz Smith as long as, as journalism exists, even on the electronic scale. Uh, electronic, I don't know whether, you know, I, I have, I'm mystified by it in that I don't think as many people read it as they do newspapers. But this is a terrible time for journalism. Uh, newspapers gone in receivership, big, major newspapers. You mm -hmm. think about all our lives are in trouble. And I talked to the editor the other day of US News and World Report, and they're sort of going out of the print business, the news magazine. But you would think Rupert Murdoch, with all his money, this is one person that he'd preserve. And I would think it was the one person that a lot of people picked up the New York Post. Mm. I think the New York Post is really teetering on the edge when they do something like that. Which would be too bad. That was a paper started by Alexander Hamilton, That's one right. of my heroes. That's right. One of, it was. Was one of your heroes. Anyway, thanks, my Stan. Pleasure, this Chuck. is wonderful. we got to do this again. I mean, you do this so well. They're going to put me out of business. <laughs> this is Chuck and Coney, and this has been Focus Washington.